All right, uh, we're going to go over your questions from the assignment. Uh, I really don't care how many you have. Uh, we can spend all day doing that if you want. If you don't have questions or as soon as you get your questions answered, uh, here is your voice. Voice. What? Here is okay. your uh, practice test for today. This is your time for today. So I'll just put these on this desk over here. Uh, so as soon as you get your assignment all taken care of, uh, give me the uh, assignment and take the practice test and start working on that. All right. Yes. Oh, what? Well, the practice test, you'll get a better sense of exactly what's going to be on the test from that. All right. So page 151. Page 151. This one would find that very, very difficult. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad that I was able to challenge you a little bit. I hope that you uh, showed no. some persistence. I failed. We're uh, and again, I did my best. Didn't just one. give up right away. I, All right, I, a square of side S is inscribed in a circle. Delay, delay. Couldn't find a place to park. What? Okay, so 59 says a square of side S is inscribed inside a circle, yeah. and we are trying to find the uh, formula for the area of a circle using S as the variable. Okay, well, what's the formula for the area of a circle? IR squared. IR squared. So I know that the area of a circle is going to be uh, pi r squared. And so what I need to do is find the relationship between the radius of the circle and the side of the square so that I can make that uh, substitution and switch those around. So here is the radius of the circle. Anybody see how I can set some of the gate at the square? Okay, like this? Yeah, I was thinking about this the whole way. Oh, the whole thing. You want to go all the way. All right, that's fine. So you're going to go like this. S squared plus S squared. Like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, all right, and so we've got a right triangle right here, and this side is S, and this side is obviously uh, S. Okay, good. So how would I find this whole hypotenuse? Diagonal theorem. Diagonal S squared plus S squared equals the... Uh, I don't know, that's the diameter, right? Yeah. All about the diameter squared. What's S squared plus S squared? 2S squared. 2S squared. So 2S squared uh, is equal to the diameter squared. Okay. Yeah, how do I do that? Divide it by 2. Um, but it's being squared right now, so before I divide that by 2, I'm going to have to square root it. Okay? So if I square root the diameter squared, I get the diameter. Square root of 2, I'm just going to leave as the square root of 2. And then uh, the square root of s squared is s. s. All right? So the diameter of that circle is equal to the square root of 2 times the length of the side of the square root 2 s. No, it's not, because we did the little quarter triangle. Yeah. No, it's not a totally different answer, because we're not done yet. Um, how do I find the radius of the circle? Yeah. Divide the diameter by 2. So we're going to divide this by 2, and I'm going to divide this by 2. So that tells me that the radius is equal to the square root of 2 uh, times s over 2. Okay. But in this formula, I don't have the radius. I have the radius squared. So I need to square this beast. What is the square root of 2 squared? 2. What is s squared? And what is 2 squared? 4. And 2 divided by 4 reduces to 1 half. So the radius squared is s squared over 2. So I can rewrite it as pi s squared over 2. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Okay, so that's a little different approach. Uh, when we did a problem like this before, and what some of you did, we did a problem uh, almost exactly like this one. In fact, it might have been the exact same problem. Um, 
we did just a little tiny triangle here and had each side be s over 2 because it's half the side of the square. Okay? And if you do it that way, it works out to be the same. Right? Okay. All right, uh, number 60, now we're going the other way around. We have a circle inscribed in a square. So that means that the square is on the outside and the circle is on the inside. Okay? And what do we know here? Uh, once again, the square has side length S. And we want to write the area of the circle again as a function of side. So isn't the S. diameter S? Uh, yep, the diameter would be S. This one's pretty easy though. We don't need to go through all of that. Pythagorean theorem stuff. Okay. Good. There's the uh, radius of the circle. That's over two. Right. And so can you see that the radius of the circle is just going to be half the side of the square? Yeah. So this length here is going to be S over 2. So to write my formula for the area of it, I'm going to go pi times the radius squared. What's S over 2 squared? S squared. S squared over and then we're done. So that was pretty easy. Okay, am I just uh, going here? Yes. How far did we go to? 66. 66? Yeah. Okay. That's good. What teacher drives a moped? Uh, I'm trying to figure that out. That's awesome. Don't know. Oh, well, there you go. So, so for every son? Oh, maybe. Because she's a fan. So that's a good one. I don't know. Is that it was the guy, though? No, it's a girl. I saw a gal here. Oh, the son with the helmet was a guy? No, it's a girl. But she's for somebody else. Oh, so it's a for somebody else. I don't know. Figure that out. All right, 61. It's a light cylindrical tank with <laughs> diameter <laughs> 20 feet. Is partially filled with oil to a depth of eight feet. So it's only filled to eight feet. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we are asked to write the volume of oil in the tank as a function of h. Do you know the formula for the volume of a cylinder? No. no. Area of the base times the height. What's the base? What shape? A circle, what's the formula for the area of circle? R squared. squared. So in this case, what's the radius? 10. So pi times 10 squared is? 100 pi. Okay. So the area of the base is 100 pi, and then you multiply it by the height. That's it. Okay, what's the height? So what I did is I started with the formula for the volume of the uh, cylinder, pi r squared h, which I would give that to you if you needed to know that for this problem. No, I just substitute stuff that I know in here. That's what is r equal? 20. That's no. the diameter, 10, right? So r is 10, so that means r squared is 100. What's h? No, no. So it's just h, oh, so you just wow, put it's really in. easy. Why is it so hard? I don't know. Okay, number 62, now we are going to take that same tank and we're going to put in some specifics. Alright, so we once again have a cylindrical tank with a diameter of 20 feet. Uh, it is filled with oil to a depth of 40 feet, so they're giving us the uh, height of the oil this time. And then we are going to drain the oil out at two cubic feet per second. So there's a little spigot there, and the oil is draining out. I don't know why. Uh, pretty much. And then just minus. Minus. Yep, exactly right. Okay, so the volume of the cylindrical tank in this case is, let's go from the beginning, pi r squared h. What's r? 10. So that means that r squared is 100, 100 because the diameter is 20. Right? Okay, and then the height is 40. 40. 40. 
so I can now rewrite the volume as pi, pi times 100 times 40. But everybody knows that 100 times 40 is 4, 1, 2, 3, 1,000. So it's 4,000 pi is the volume. Then as Taylor said, they, it is leaking oil or draining oil at uh, 2 cubic feet per second. So what do I need for minus 2 cubic?
Uh, okay, first I have to turn so my scatter plot on. So this is not highlighted. So I need to scroll up. Highlight that, me. That, and then go do nine. And there is my scatter plot. How much time? And it's black. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, so B says find the equation of the linear regression line. How do I do that? Stat Cal 4. Good. Slide over to Cal. And then number four. And if you want to do this where it gets pasted into the uh, Y1 at the same time, you can do that. But I don't think you necessarily need to for this problem. How do you do that? But I will. Um, okay, so there's my equation. Um, so let's copy this down somewhere else. Um, 1163, we'll just go to the nearest full number. You can be lazy. 1163X. And then the y-intercept was 4164. So I should really change that to 1164. No. Plus uh, 4164. So that's for part uh, B. And then it says for part C, based on the regression line, approximately how many new products would be introduced in the year 2000? So what do I do with that? Like 2000. Like 2000 in for x. Oh, so how do you know if they're done? The, so you put uh, 2,000 in there for X. When you just put uh -huh. gonna happen. Oh, nice. I put in what? 20. Oh, nice. Nice, because the X's are the years since 1980, not since uh, zero. Okay. What do you get? 27,000 what? 444. 444. All right. Okay, and uh, we're not going to do uh, 66. It's basically the same thing. It takes a long time to enter those all into the uh, calculator. So as long as you know how to do 65, it should be in good shape. Okay, so you turn those in.